Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today is the first video in a series of five or six videos we're going to do entitled Michael's Room. Now let's do a little background on Michael's Room. You all are familiar with Michael if you watch our YouTube videos. Not directly, but Michael is the videographer behind the camera. And we can see him here. Michael's been taking the blackboard videos, as we call them, and um, doing the graphics and everything for us, probably for the last four or five years. Yeah. Something like that. We talked a little bit about his system and his room and stuff like that. And what I came to realize was that he really enjoyed listening to music. So I came over one night and we listened to some music and I could tell that, you know, he had a, a good ear and a good appreciation for uh, music, but a very bad <laughs> room and, and not so good gear in some uh, areas. So I decided to, to uh, make Michael's room kind of a project for us and use our products and technology in the room and film each step of the way as we treated the room for front wall, primary reflection, secondary tertiary reflection, subwoofer positioning, and uh, new electronics and cables. So that's kind of the direction we took uh, with the process. And this first video, we're going to talk about treating the front wall and the first reflection. It's just a matter of using our foam panels. These are our 75 inch high panels that are 27 inches wide. And we just took and put a wood frame around them and they, they lean up against wall surfaces. They can be hung also, but for purposes of this project, since you know it is a living room, we wanna be able to move them in and out as needed. And we started with the front wall and the first reflection point. Now you all know that front wall is you know the most important wall in terms of low frequency energy it's also very important for middle and high frequency energy so the bottom line is we want to treat the front wall and the first reflection which is what we've done here and you can see how we set it up that way it's just primary reflection in this one and that was the first setup we had and michael lived with that for a couple months and um, he was never had any treatment or anything in his room. He's always listened to a 5.1 system with the subwoofer, he's, and he's got uh, bookshelf uh, speakers. So, what was that like? Well, I've been a music lover for pretty much all my life. I've always enjoyed listening to music. It's very important to me. It's almost something spiritual to me, like some people meditate. Um, I like to take the time and listen to music as often as I can. An hour, sometimes two hours per day if I have the time. Financially, I've never been in a position to buy any real high-end gear. I've always bought whatever my budget could afford. I always tried to buy the best components that I could afford, um, which wasn't really all that much compared to what some of you guys listen to and when I first started to work with Dennis and he started coming over at first I was a little afraid of what he would say about my system um, and um, he sat down and listened and he said you got really good speakers I was like well thank you <laughs> after we did the treatment of the room it's a different like night and day. Um, I've been listening obviously to what Dennis has been saying in his videos because I filmed them and I was like most people I guess in that I thought that it's all in the gear. If you buy expensive fancy gear it will sound good no matter where you put it, no matter what you do with it. I never even thought about what a difference the room itself makes and it's such a no-brainer because it's physics and listening to the difference even with my inexpensive equipment it makes my little two thousand dollar setup sound like a lot more um, the music sounds alive 
It sounds like a living, breathing thing. It fills the room and it just sounds beautiful. It's, it's absolutely amazing what a difference it makes. And I wish we could record it, but it wouldn't do it justice in the video. Well, this is uh, a good example here of why I always say, you know, we could take a $2,000 system and put it in a good room and it'll sound like 50,000. Take a $50,000 system, put it in a bad room, it'll sound like 2,000. And this is good testimonial to that situation. And, you know, Michael, uh, let's walk through a little bit of his rig here. And he's got a 5.1 uh, multi-channel receiver for home theater. And then just kind of walk yeah. us through the rest of the gear. I've always liked listening to multi-channel, even in music. I know a lot of you guys don't do that. Most audiophiles listen to two-channel music, but I like the big sound stage. I like the immersive experience of surround sound. I have a Pioneer Blu-ray player that plays SACDs, which I really enjoy. I have a Yamaha $300 amp. My pride and joy is my speakers. They're acoustic research satellite speakers and I've had them for about 18 years and I got them for a really good price back when they came out. They just sound wonderful for small speakers. They sound very musical. They do sound good and we all know that smaller uh, speakers have higher resolution. So multiple sources, five channels in higher resolution and a treated room, you really can get something. You can get a lot of definition, you can get a lot of uh, musical quality out of it, but first things first, we have to start controlling the problems in the room and we have the front wall which we've treated in that and then we treated the the primary reflection point so let's just kind of walk through that a little bit with people on on what you heard because you lived with that for a couple months the most striking thing that i noticed right away was um just how much more definition i've been getting out of my system there's a lot more detail in the music when i listen to big orchestral music it sounds a lot more natural and alive and it's it's almost like you have the musician in front of you it is as if a veil has been lifted from the sound stage that i previously had and i always thought it sounded pretty good to begin with i never thought about that you know just adding these panels to the room would make such a dramatic difference it's truly really amazing well, remember, we're always saying that what you hear at the listening position is a balance between the direct energy from the speakers and the reflected energy off the sidewalls. And it's really the sidewalls that can cause us a lot of grief or can be our best ally. And it's all about the rate and level of absorption that you use to manage the time signature of the reflection. And this is what a lot of people don't understand. They think absorption is absorption. It's not. Just like music and voice are not noise. They're different. Music and voice are very different than noise. So they have to be treated differently. Their, their acoustical requirements, their rates and levels of absorption have to be designed for music and voice. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. And they use building insulation and all these other crazy products and they don't know what the rate and level of absorption is. And that's why most of those technologies overabsorb and take the life out of the middle and high frequencies in a presentation. So the rate and level on our phone took me eight years, $2 million to figure out. It's beautiful for music and voice. I don't want to brag, but it really is. It's beautiful. okay to brag. It's, 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 it's really good. that good, isn't it? <laughs> you know, and it's just wonderful uh, to get it all dialed in and all that. And, you know, Michael got a chance to uh, live with the front wall and then the primary uh, reflections and more, more definition, um, more separation. Um, maybe not as wide of a soundstage, but, but way more information in front of you. Way more resolution, way more dynamic range, way more of everything in front of you. Now, if we want to take that which we just described and which Michael just walked through and then make the room larger, sound larger, we can add diffusion, but that'll be something down the road for another series of videos because right now we're just going to stay focused on absorption.
Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.